Hey everyone, Gil Gross here post-match. Daniil Medvedev versus Hubert Hurkacz, Australian Open 2024 quarterfinal. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video. Medvedev winning yet another five-setter at this year's Australian Open to advance to his third AO semifinal in the last four years. Five sets over Hubert Hurkacz, 6-4 in the fifth, and boy, that was a wild finish. Things got a little bit crazy. I got an adrenaline rush from watching that fifth set because I did not know which way that was going to go. So let's start there. The predicament that we were in heading into the fifth set and how Daniil Medvedev pulled it out. At the end of the fourth, Medvedev slowed down considerably. He, he lost his legs. He wasn't cramping, but he was like... 50% speed around the court. Clearly feeling it in the legs, gas tank on empty, uh, leaves the court at the end of the fourth set, tries to buy as much time as possible, has a big long conversation with James Kiathavong, the chair umpire, uh, before leaving the court, ends up being seven or eight minutes. Comes back. And again, at this point, even though my prediction before the match was Medvedev in five, even though when both players were at their best in this match, I think Medvedev was playing better tennis and playing winning tennis. Despite all of that, it was very much looking like Daniil was in trouble. And by the way, Hercotch, fresh as a daisy. And side note, I've never seen the man get tired. Not once in my life. I've seen him get tight, but I've never seen him get tired. Trains in Florida, doesn't tend to exert a lot of energy with the big serve and just the way he moves around the court. So that was that. But what happened in this fifth? Well, Medvedev, at least in the first three or four service holds, he served himself right through it. He, he served the best he served in the match by far, and he needed it desperately because he was trying to recover from the physical collapse at the end of the fourth set. And I don't think that's an exaggeration to call it that. But what happened was, you know, Hercotch has his big serve and he's holding easily and Medvedev is conserving energy, not trying to do too much running on return games smartly. Uh, you you want to just protect your serve, try to buy yourself time and hope to get a second wind. And with Medvedev getting so many free points with his serve and Barely missing first serves. I'm talking 85% range in his first three, four service games. Not a lot of returns coming back. So what's happening? Nobody's making returns in this fifth set. Neither player. It's almost like Daniil is resting. So I started to do the math in my head. You have the eight minute break at the end of the set. And then I would say you had like a 25-minute passage of play between the two, maybe 20 minutes, where they didn't get into any rallies and Medvedev didn't really move much at all. So how long has Daniil basically been able to rest now? We're talking about a good 30 minutes. And that's where you started to feel as the set continued that a couple things were happening. One, Daniil might get a second wind here because... His, his legs kind of got a rest there, as I was talking about. The other thing was, Hercotch notices that Medvedev had completely slowed down, and he got a little tight. And that's not surprising. You know, I mean, might as well, when I, when I get something right, might as well uh, call back to it. The prediction of Medvedev in five, if you watch the preview, was mostly based on a gap in nerve management skills. Medvedev... Very, very experienced late in majors, best of five. And uh, although it's not unheard of that nerves get to Medvedev, it's happened before, it's less likely and usually less extreme when it happens compared to Hercoc. And uh, certainly, Hubie missed a lot of returns that probably should have come back in the court, even though Medvedev was serving great. There were even some second serve returns that Hercoc missed. And most of the time, when Hubie did make returns in the court, he made an error pretty quickly. 
And I'm just talking about the beginning of the fifth set, that essential period of time where Medvedev was vulnerable and Hercoc missed his window. Then, as Medvedev started to get some legs back, he also went mad scientist net rushing. When he was on the end of the court hitting against the wind and returning against Hercoc, um, and, and serving in, in this case as well, uh, he realized, well, in order to prevent the rally from going long, I actually need to come forward. Daniil Medvedev needs to come forward. You heard it right. And he did really well. He won seven of nine net points in the fifth set. He was in more than Hercoc in this fifth set. Hercoc was seven for seven at net. Medvedev was seven for nine. Daniil had some serve and volleys that completely caught Hercoc by surprise. And pretty much when Medvedev got a short ball, he was executing good approach shots coming in and finishing off the point right then and there. Incredible. Not what Medvedev is usually able to do. It was very 2019-like in terms of fearlessness and surprisingness. Remember that that era of Medvedev when he was just coming up and he, he hit this this streak of confidence where he was thinking extremely clearly on the court and whenever he was losing, he would try something crazy. And the best I've ever seen him volley in a match was probably the US Open final that year against Nadal. Down two sets to love. It's not working from the baseline. Conditions super, super slow. This is before they sped up the courts at the US Open. And Daniil goes, all right, I'm a net rusher now. And kind of made it work. Very 2019-like, what he did in this fit set. He talked after the match about what was happening in his head at the time, which is one of the things I love about Daniil Medvedev. He always lets you in and tells you what's going on. He talked about downplaying the consequences of defeat in his head, thinking, look, I'm against the wind. I'm very tired. I don't think I can you know, grind this out from the baseline right now, so I need to come forward. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Whatever, I'll fly home. <laughs> he kept saying that in the post-match interview with John McEnroe. He's like, yeah, if it doesn't work, I'll fly home. So uh, apparently that was his mindset. That's downplaying the consequences of defeat in his head, enabling him to employ tactics that require a certain fearlessness because they're out of his comfort zone. So he goes to net a lot and it's successful. And kind of has this blip of energy Late in the set, break serve, hold serve at 5-4. They played some spectacular points. And uh, the serving was uh, remained pretty good for Medvedev throughout the fifth set. All right. Uh, now we can backtrack. Crazy fifth set. Crazy. But now we can backtrack. The tactic throughout the match that Daniil was mostly successful with was just staying really solid from the baseline and actually hitting Hercoc slow through the middle of the court. Just taking the pace out of it and finding the backhand specifically, which I know is a little bit counterintuitive compared to what we normally talk about with Hercoc. Normally it's forehand weakness, forehand weakness, forehand weakness, but... In terms of pace generation, the backhand lags far behind the forehand. Now, the backhand is a pretty good redirecting shot. It's kind of a shock-absorbing shot. But what Medvedev discovered in this match is if you hit the ball really slow and get Hercoc to hit a backhand, that shot is a mess. And I'm going to make a statement here. I actually think that Hercoc's backhand is a little bit overrated. And I've been guilty of this myself because there are times where the backhand down the line kind of seems like his best shot. And there are times where the open stance backhand defense seems really, really good, especially for his size. But it, it kind of first caught my attention when I was looking at tennis inside shot quality. And I consistently saw Hercoc's backhand score really badly. And then I started to look at it more carefully. And it's not that I always agree with that. Uh, with, with the shot quality and that I always fall in line with it. But in this case, as soon as I started paying a little bit more attention to Hercoc's backhand, I, I, I did start to 
look at it as maybe maybe it gets too much credit because the forehand has been such an issue. I think that might be the case. In this match, Hercotch's forehand was miles better than his backhand. No doubt about it. And Medvedev had a lot of success picking on it with slow balls. Hubie from the back of the court didn't have the pace to get through Medvedev and didn't have the consistency to survive the rally. So he's at a shot tolerance deficit and he's at a firepower deficit or uh, he does not have point finishing ground stroke penetration. So you put those two problems together, you got big issues. Medvedev in nine plus shot rallies for the match, 44 to 26. Rarely do you see such a big disparity in long rallies. First set tie break, obviously also a very crucial passage of play in the match. So many neutral errors from Hercotch. Didn't come forward, didn't find enough dominance with his first serve. A lot of baseline rallies, a lot of neutral errors from Hercotch. That's how that played out. Now in the second set, Medvedev lost his own consistency. So the, the lengthy rally dominance didn't really play out. It was also Hercotch's best set in terms of free points on first serve. Then in the third set, it was back to rally dominance for Medvedev. A lot of the same things that, that was probably, was that Daniil's best set? Might have been. Might have been. Probably. Um, so it was, you know, back to dominance in the rallies in the third set for Daniil. Then in the fourth set, Hercotch, to his credit, he tried to change things up. He realized this isn't working from the back of the court. And he started coming forward much more. And then he made another adjustment from the back. The adjustment from the back, I'm going to talk about it right now. Because it turned the match around in the fourth before Medvedev got his legs. Uh, sorry, before Medvedev lost his legs. Before, because Medvedev was up a break. Hercotch got it back on serve before I noticed Daniil struggling physically. Now, were things probably going on in Medvedev's head? Uh, what were his legs, you know, probably feeling it a little bit at that point? Almost certainly. In fact, Medvedev said that even after the second set, he started feeling tired in this match. So that tells you probably coming in physically, the the batteries weren't fully charged if he if he ran out that quickly. But anyway, here's the adjustment. And it was a direct counter to Medvedev slow balling the Hurkacz backhand. I wonder if you guys listening to my analysis know where this is going. Um, so if you try to slow ball the backhand, the counter is you use your feet. You have extra time because the ball's not coming in fast. You use that extra time to move your feet and use your forehand. So what Hercotch did really well was every time Medvedev tried to slow ball his backhand, he skipped around it. And he ripped runaround forehands. And he accelerated. And he was aggressive. And that's been the innovation also for Hercotch more and more in the last five or so months, really ever since Wimbledon. Hercotch has had the ability to get aggressive on his forehand. And by the way, when he gets aggressive on his forehand, he actually misses less than when he gets passive on the forehand. And that has to do with the safety of racket head acceleration. So a lot of really great forehand inside-ins from Hercotch, some good ones inside-out as well. It turned the match around in the fourth set. And that, you know, after that, Daniil had the, the physical decline. We went to the fifth, and now you're kind of caught up on how I viewed the ebbs and flows of that match. There were a couple of other things that were key for Medvedev that I do want to talk about. Uh, one, when Hercotch early in the fourth set, and I, I think this was also a key in the fifth, um, Medvedev did start to read Hercotch's game pretty well, and there was a lot of anticipation combined with good court position. So Daniil was much more mindful in this match, to me more mindful than he's ever been in this match, of trying to take enough time away and hug the baseline enough to deter Hercotch from coming forward. 
And he combined that with reading patterns very well eventually. I don't know that I saw this a lot early on, but in the second half of the match, reading Hercotch's patterns very well. And it felt like every time Hercotch hit an approach shot, Daniil was already, Daniil already had a head start leaning whichever way Hercotch was going for it. And what we saw was when Hercotch tried to come forward more often in the third set a little bit, in the fourth set a lot, uh, Medvedev was anticipating the approach shots and nailing passing shots. Net efficiency in the fourth set, which was the set that Hercotch came forward the most, was 10 of 16. And I thought at this point, that the Medvedev slow balls and his anticipation, court position, and passing shots, I thought those were going to be ultimately the keys to the match and he was going to cruise to victory. That's when things got complicated. Physically, fit set, had to rely on the first serve, all the stuff I talked about at the top. And then the last thing I need to cover is how Medvedev started the match with the close return position. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen, maybe once, but I can't remember when. I feel like one time I've seen Medvedev start a match standing close. But I got to tell you, I just can't remember which match it was. And and maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe this was the first time I've seen him do it at the start. Uh, because usually what I've seen from Daniil is this. Oh, you know what? I think it was against Nick Kyrgios at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I think that was the one where he started close, but it's very, very rare. What's a little bit more common, first of all, the most common is that Medvedev never changes his return position. That's the most common. This, then after that, uh, what Daniil will do is he'll be like, okay, I'm losing a lot of points here. Let me try it. Then usually he moves up, misses a couple returns, and then moves back again. <laughs> I've, I've seen that like four or five times. But in this one, he starts close and... He certainly had the element of surprise. Broke right away. And you, you could understand why, right? Like all of the preparation for this match and everything that Hercotch has kind of hinged his success on in this matchup has kind of been predicated around, I'm going to hit a wide serve, approach shot, open court, come in. Like that's been the pattern. So when he steps up to the baseline and what the heck, he, he's in. That's uh, that's a little bit tough to deal with. That's distracting to deal with. And uh, it, it's it's really great. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised that Medvedev pulled this out in a major. Notice when Jim Courier was having his tremendous interview with Medvedev, and then in the press conference they were asking Medvedev about it, uh, Daniil intentionally said nothing. He kept his cards close to his vest, even though after this match he said, I knew when I was answering these questions that I was going to stand close against Hercotch. Here was the reason why he stood close against Hercotch. He said that the serve is so big that he feels that he doesn't get much of an advantage from standing back there because it's the only serve where the ball is still kind of rising when it hits the back fence. So basically he's saying the ball doesn't really slow down and like I still feel rushed from the back fence. So his logic is if I'm going to feel rushed, I might as well feel rushed from closer in. Okay, I mean, interesting. You know, frankly, I would never have thought of that. I would never have anticipated that that would be, you know, the the reason. Um, I I will say, you know, after the surprise element wore off, I don't think it was that effective. In the second set, Hercoc dominated with his first serve. But you know where I'm going to stand on this. I think it's a massive positive that, He's mixing it in. He's starting to feel it more and more. That's going to make him better at it. And it's going to give his opponents something to think about. And that includes whoever he plays next, Carlos Alcaraz or Alexander Zverev. They're going to have to, they're going to, have to now think about this. They have another thing to consider, which is what do we do if he does that? And by the way, I think that it's more effective or it, it would prove to be more effective against your Djokovic's and your Alcaraz's of the world compared to your Hercotch's of the world. And here's why. The main advantage of standing as deep as possible is volume of returns in play. And I think against Hercotch, because you have some executional issues on the plus one ball, 
Um, and, and sometimes just, you know, in rally, there's some executional issues. I think it's in Medvedev's best interest to do whatever return position is going to achieve the most balls in play. But against Djokovic and against Alcaraz, they are so clinical behind their first serves. There are no executional issues. And as a result, I think it's a little bit more important that Medvedev finds neutralizing returns, neutralizing court position. And therefore, I think it's it's a better sacrifice to make if he, you know, and, and they rely less on free points. So I don't think they'd, they'd take advantage of Medvedev standing in as well as Hubie would take advantage of Medvedev standing in because Hubie is likely to get more free points with against the close position. Djokovic and Alcaraz might get a smidge more free points, but I think that would be worth it because I think to give those two, Djokovic and Alcaraz, to give those two so much court to work with, to me is a big problem. All right. Um, let's leave it at that. Really interesting match. I mean, I don't even think I was able to cover everything that happened. And it's a 21-minute post-match video. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.